I think it's working. Yep, we're on. Hey everybody, welcome. It's Rob here. OVS Photo Success with our first episode for 2012. And uh, I don't know which number it is, but uh, hey, we'll call it the Costa Rica episode because I'm down in Tamarindo Beach, Costa Rica. And uh, I thought I'd shoot the uh, TV show from down here. I'm on holidays for a week with my family, and I don't know what James is up to. I invited him down, but... Uh... Hey everybody, Haji here, co-founder of NoBSPhotoSuccess.com. Welcome to another episode of NoBS TV. Rob, what can I say? You're sitting there, probably on a beach, in the sunshine, soaking it all in, and here I am, northern Ontario, and what am I doing? Well, of course, I'm, I'm out on another lake. It's, uh, you know, it's probably minus... Uh, you know, minus 20. It's cold. It's cold today. So, you know, we do what we do, right? You do what you do. I do what I do. This is what I love. And uh, although, you know, as of this moment right now, I'd probably like to be sitting in there with you beside on the beach, you know, having some fun. But anyways, all right, folks, what do we got for you today? Well, it's a new year, right? We're in 2012. Happy New Year, like we said before. But it's all about growing your business, right? Growing better photography, better business practice, more clients. So let's talk about what's coming up in the next little while. And that could be, you know, Valentine's Day. Maybe you're going to do some New Year's events. But now's the time to start thinking about it. Now's the time to start marketing it. When I, um, I've got my dog day coming up. We're going to be doing it in February. Everybody's going to be doing their Valentine's Day. We're going to be doing our dog day because I want to grow it a little bit more. We're booking two days now instead of one, so I'm taking a little bit extra time to market it. So even though it's January now and I'm doing it at the end of February, I'm marketing it right now. Hey, check it out. You can see my breath. See, I'm blowing a little smoke stuff, Rob. It's probably not what you'd find in Jamaica or something, right? Anyways, so yeah, so my event's going to be happening at the end of February. I'm going to start marketing now. Whenever you're doing an event, and this is my little kind of marketing tip for you on this episode of No BS TV. Whenever you're doing an event, don't book it like last minute. Don't make it in like a week later say, hey, we're having an event next week. Unless you're doing like a flash event where it's, you know, time sensitive. You need to act now. It's only available today. You've got 24 hours or 48 hours to act on it. But if you really want to do a good event and you really want to book clients and you want to pack it up and you want to get the most out of your profits, start marketing it at least a month, even two months in advance. Start getting the word out there that you're going to be doing this event. Maybe put people on a VIP list. That's what I've done for my dog day already. I said, hey, we're doing a dog day in February. Get on the VIP list now. We'll call you as soon as we know the dates and the prices and the packages before we even put anything on the internet, before we put it on Facebook, you know, in our regular, usual social media channels. So, like I was saying, start advertising for it now. Get that hype up. Get it excited. Get people excited about it, okay? Because then when it comes time to actually promote it, they're already aware of it's coming, but it gets them more excited and they'll act. They know. They start putting the bug in the ear. It's like when we do our family portraits, when we're doing our consultations, we start putting the bug in the ear about selling the big wall portrait. Okay, well, it's the same thing with your events. Start putting the bug in the ear so that they can, you know, they can um, plan for it, right? Start some thinking. Geez, maybe we should do that. Hey, that's coming up, uh, you know, in the next month or more. Maybe we should think of doing that. So anyways, that's a little marketing tip for you, uh, you know, starting off the new year. Now, tech tip. Tech tip. What do I got for tech talk? Um, oh yeah, okay. There's something. So, when you're out on, uh, here's my here's my tech gadget for for this episode, uh, and it's a must-have when you're in Northern Ontario and you're doing outdoor location shoots. Um, so let's say we do a lot of family portraits outdoors. Uh, in the winter time too, a lot of people out here want snowy, uh, snowy family portraits. Well, sometimes we're pretty far away, right? We're out in the middle of nowhere, and um, you know you get a little thirsty, right? So this little baby here is your portable ice auger, okay? And what this does is it allows you to plow through the ice, okay, and you get your drinking water that way. So you look really professional when you say, "Hey, you guys thirsty?" Oh yeah, we are thirsty, James. Well, you know what? Let me get you some water. Check this out. And you drill a hole right there, and if, you know, you pull out a cup of your hand with water and say, there you go, have a sip. They like that. No, I'm just joking. So, tech doc, of course, you know, I joke a lot. Um, this is my tech doc. 
monitor calibration okay let's start the new year off with good colors okay of course it all happens in capture right whether you do your post processing in raw or you shoot in JPEG and you set it all at the time of capture really what you see on the screen is what you want to come out on print okay if you're printing um, you know the other thing is you want it to be as close to what other people's monitor monitors will look like every monitor is different some images we post look different than other people's monitors but I like to use the uh, spider okay the calibration spider it's very 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 simple now it is a little bit pricey okay I paid I still got the sticker on there I paid two hundred and twenty nine dollars for that okay two hundred and twenty nine dollars so I know 229 bucks but you know what it, 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 it's worth it and uh, it's very very simple to use okay you simply plug it in well first you install the software it comes with a nice little handy CD you plug it in okay and then you just follow the tutorials it'll do a pre calibration setting up your monitor and then every week or so you just have to run your spider again and it'll recalibrate your monitor so you're guaranteed pretty well I'm happy with my results to have great color on your monitor that will go through right into the print when we get our prints back from the lab and we're looking at them on the screen we're looking at the print we're like wow man these are like dang dang close okay dang dang that's my new that's the word of the day today dang dang so look at getting there's plenty of different models out there I do like the spider okay this is the spider 3 pro I bought it last year and I use it uh, I use it every week as you can see the boxes get a little bit ripped and all that for me opening it up and putting it back in because I like to put it back into the original box so Let's start off with 2012 with getting great color and make it easier for you and make your clients happier. Okay, we've got to stay organized. That's what it's about. Okay, so that's all I got for you today. I'm about to go fishing. That's why I really am out here. Uh, I'm about to go ice fishing. I got the day off today. So I'm going to enjoy a little bit of outdoors. Rob, what can I say? You know, you're probably, you could be standing right here. You could be standing right here. I don't know. But anyways, you have fun. I'll see you next week when you get back. And to all you No BSers out there, we'll see you next week on another episode of No BS TV. Cheers. He's doing something else. He wanted to stay where it was cold. So uh, anyways, a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, when I travel, I talked about this in a previous episode. Uh, I brought my D7000. I keep the bigger cameras at home because they're lighter. And if I lose them or get them stolen, not such a big loss. But the D7000 shoots video too, so uh, I tend to shoot some video when I'm on holidays. And the reason I bought the 7200 uh, was because we had organized a photo shoot the other day. I'll show you a little bit in this episode later on, so keep watching. Actually, I shot it yesterday, no, two days ago. And uh, it was coincidental that there was a family from our uh, town who happened to be in Costa Rica, so we arranged a photo shoot. So, we're going to make a few sales. And it was just on this exact beach, Tamarindo Beach, right here, sunset. We met them all. There was about 15, 16 of them. They all dressed in white. They looked awesome. We had them bare feet. So, anyways, we're just going to head over yonder and I'm going to shoot some, uh, some stuff on lighting for you. Okay? Some of my favorite lighting techniques that uh, I like to use. We'll get my daughter in here and her friend. They're back there somewhere. Uh, we're going to get you in and amongst the palm trees. I'm going to explain a couple things on lighting, working in open shade, finding the light, and uh, which you can apply in any situation. You don't have to be in the tropics. You can be anywhere where there's a lot of sun and you're struggling and you're trying to work with open, uh, open shade. So I'm going to show you a few tricks and tips on that. So. I also have a uh, camera bag. It's like a fanny pack. It's a low pro. You know, it's got little pockets in it. And uh, you put your weed in there. Don't do drugs. And uh, you can carry a uh, camera, a couple lenses, you know. One thing I want to point out, whenever you're at a, in a foreign country, especially, you know, Costa Rica is not an impoverished nation, but they're not exactly, you know, the highest standard of living. It's pretty good though, it's the happiest place on earth. They got a very high literacy rate. It's an awesome place, you just feel good, you like the people, it's a great place to visit. Uh, we're actually considering spending more and more time here every year. Um, my wife and I bought a condo down here last year, so that's, that's called commitment. So, but you know, whenever you're traveling, uh, theft is not a big issue, but 
No, I'm sorry. I meant to say crime is not a big issue, but theft is. Um, you feel pretty safe in the places like this, but uh, you got to watch your stuff, man. So, women in purses, uh, anybody with a laptop, uh, anybody with camera gear, I'm constantly paranoid. Never, never leave the stuff in unattended. And uh, you never want to go around with big camera bags and too much equipment. So I'm trying to low key it all and you don't want to ever show off and, and, and just show off any kind, any signs of uh, uh, opulence or wealth of any sort because it's going to attract attention. You want to keep it low key and on the down low. So anyways, we're almost at the spot I want to bring you into and we're going to go into the open shade just over there. I'm going to give you a quick glance here. Hold on. There we are. We're going to head into that area there. Is this area here that I shot the uh, family? Check out the sunset. Beautiful place. All right, so we'll see you guys in the open shade in two minutes. All right, ciao for now. All right, we're on. There we are. Okay, so we've got the sun setting back there. We've got Danielle, my daughter, she's going to be our subject. I just want to point something out. Come on in. Okay, you got light falling on her face, and we've got sunlight coming streaming through the trees in the background. So I'm capturing some of that right here. We've got the wind coming this way, so that's a bonus. But there's our light source. So anyway, can you come around over here? More? There's our light source. Ta-da! Come on back here. That sun coming through is a kicker light just gently streaming off her shoulder and her hair. So you got to be careful you don't underexpose because your camera might want to underexpose trying to compensate for that light coming in through the background. So let's do a few photos and then I'm going to show you an alternate technique. 70 to 200, 2.8 ISO. We're going at 800. There we go. Turn your head just a little. Good. Nice. The way it's lit on the left side, the way that sun's coming through, beautiful. So this is how you work open, open shade. Look at your light source. Don't get confused. The worst thing to do, and I see people do this all the time. Come on over here. So hey, I'm going to get you to come right here. This is what I see all the time. Come on over here. See Danielle? Okay, watch that hole behind you. Yeah, this is like crap. This is just crap. It's crap. There's, there's, there's no light. Look at how dead her face is. There's no light in her eyes. I'll show you why. Come on, look at Right over here. There's the light source. Blackness and shadow. You notice that? That's the light source. If I were to shoot her this way, you got to look at the light source. So when Danielle turns this way, we got our light source, as I mentioned earlier. We got a bonus of having a kicker light. Sometimes you can have fun and use little flashlights, little travel flashlights. Okay, let's try this. Turn this way back. Okay, relax that way. Okay, I'm gonna get you to hold these. I'm gonna get you to hold these. Good. Turn it this way, good. Look at me. I don't have another person, I don't have any stands, so she's got to hold her own lights. But I'm just going to come in close anyways. Okay, bring this one back here. Good. Don't move. Good, let's go back. There we go. We're just having fun here. Woohoo! Totally bizarre. Hey, why not? Hold on. Just bring this light here. Good. There we go. Why not? Oh, serious. Chin down. Chin down. I mean, that's quick and easy and quick and dirty. We're using travel lights. You can come over here now. That's all I got to say about that. So, that's my tech tip from the beach of Tamarindo Beach, Costa Rica.
sunset. Thanks, Emma. All right, here we are. It's a mermaid. There's the beach, Tamarindo. I'm gonna do portraits over there later. It's one of the nicest beaches in this area. We're just uh, waiting for our family to show up. I'm gonna go for a little walk. Some beautiful, beautiful homes. With dogs. So we're gonna go explore and dream a little bit. I'll take my sandals off. So, I just thought I'd uh, talk about differences between, are you coming or are you staying? The differences between, well there's two basic kinds of people in a general sense. Uh, I like to divide it into those who achieve their dreams and those who just dream. Let me explain what I'm talking about. In a nutshell, it's going to sound like I'm stereotyping, but it's, there's a lot of truth to what I'm saying. There's uh, those who blame, and then there's those who take responsibility. Let me expound a little bit. Those who blame, basically, are always looking on the outside for answers and or if something doesn't go their way, which is usually 99% of the time because their lives are out of control and they let external circumstances basically dictate their destinies. So if you're of the entrepreneurial mind, and when I say entrepreneurial, I'm not just talking about making money and running a business. I'm talking about no matter what you're doing in your life, entrepreneurialism is a state of mind. Even if you're stuck in a job or if you're working at a job for somebody else that you love, you could still be entrepreneurial. So you should treat your whole life, your whole destiny, with an entrepreneurial mindset. So you've got two types of people, the entrepreneurial type set and the kind who blame. Basically, they give away their power, okay? Can you guess which one's harder to do? Yes, the entrepreneurial one. Can you guess which one's the rarer of the two? You guessed it, the entrepreneurial mindset. Much harder. That's why you don't see it as often, so. And again, I want to remind you, when we're talking about entrepreneurialism, and not just refer in reference to business owners, and if you know some business owners who are wealthy, successful, yet they're assholes, it doesn't mean entrepreneurs are assholes, it's just those people are, okay? So please don't generalize in that sense or use that as rationale for not being entrepreneurial. It's the best way to be. It requires that you take action, take responsibility, no matter what happens in your life. So, and this is the way I like to live. I don't get it all the time, but I like to strive towards being that way. So what we're doing now is we're looking at these homes we're dreaming, right Danielle? Yeah. Right, we're dreaming. That's, we're just kind of putting forth some suggestions to the universe, some ideas. Why not? Why not? Why not? Let's go over here. I love this light by the way, just check that out. We've got the sun back there. Hey, we've got some open sky, but it's open shade. So we've got some light coming down. Maybe I'll get the family over here later and we'll get them in here because it's too sunny yet for outdoor portraits on the, on the beach. Why not? Check this place out. Look familiar? We used to rent this place out. How many times have we been here, Danielle? Five? About that. Lots of memories here. Imagine waking up in the morning and this is your view. Why not? So that's all I got to say about that. Two mindsets. Think about it. Yeah, you got to be lined up.
you see this? You're running into a pack of wolves. So are you happy to be back in Costa Rica? Not with my mother. Why is that? You tell. <laughs> she drives me up. I just want a minute of peace without her. Enlighten us with some stories. Omar! Over here! <gasps> Mom, his name is Winmar. Oh, Winmar! Bulge.